welcome back to part four of this Derwent Ink Tense Color Long. If you just happen to be stumbling across this, go ahead and go back and check out part one, two, and three, just so you can keep up with us. Um, this color along, I'm trying something a little different where I just do 30 minute videos or 30-ish minute videos. And that way you can watch them as much in a row as you want or not. Uh, I will be releasing some in multiples per day, while other times just one a day. It just depends on how many I get done. Uh, so yeah, let's start diving back in. I think what I want to get working on next um, is like some of these features back here. So I think for the little boat back here, I want to give it some red sails. So we're going to grab our hot red and tangerine. Let me zoom you guys in. Okay. Yes, I'm using a lot of the same colors, but this is primarily to help you guys. So go in with your hot red first. Um, that way we're not having like an insanely large color palette. All right, now grab tangerine. Color that in, and then I'm gonna make the boat itself orange. Okay, and it looks like we have a little interior here. I'm just going to take our willow and just kind of fill in that. And we're just going to kind of assume that the inside of that beach barn grill has wood walls. <laughs> and then right here, this is like a windowsill. So I'm going to take some willow there, but I'm also going to take uh, one of our darker chocolate colors. Let's go with bark. Just add some bark right there. All right. And I want to color these chairs. And I think this is where we'll need some of our greens. We need to bring more green downward. So let's try some Ionian green and felt green. Okay, so take your Ionian green first. Just gently do that along the slats. Maybe a little there. Put it on the chairs here a little bit. And let's take our felt green I'm going to add that as well. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and activate those. I'm always afraid to lay too many down and then forget to activate them. <laughs> so, start over here. I'm just going to pull that up. And then I'm just going to come across so that I don't drag too much of my dark green. And same thing over here. Just pull that up. Pull that out. Pull that one up. Pull that one out. Now wipe off your nib just until it's clear before we go over here. Because you don't want to take that green and transfer it onto your orange and red over here. Now on this one, I'm going to take the orange into the red just so that it's, uh, otherwise the red will take it over. Okay. Now the table, I want that to be wood grained, but not as crazy as we've been doing. So we'll want our willow again. And yes, just plan on keeping these colors out. It'll probably save you a lot of hassle. All right, so let's take bark. And I'm thinking these are table legs in here. And if they weren't, they are now. So I'm gonna take some bark, just create a little wood grain here and there. Same thing here. Okay, now I'm gonna take some oak. Just kind of same thing, just scatter it around. Don't think about it too much. I don't think Mother Nature thought too much as wood was created. It just happened. <laughs> so that's kind of how I think of it. All right, and then grab your willow. Just kind of splash that in there. Fill out our table a little. Okay. 
go ahead and activate that. So I'm just gonna drag it. Remember like what we said before with wood grain, you don't wanna go back and forth because you will, one, pull out the color because that's what a colorless blender does if you're not careful. But two, I got a little on my surfboard. Um, you don't wanna muddle the colors. Okay, clean off that. Um, okay, so back here, we'll have like sand and dirt. Let's work on our sandy colors. So I'm thinking, and we'll test them out together too. Because I think Sicilian yellow would be good for sand. And so would. My loud chair tan, but I want to make sure before I put that down. Like I said, we always want to test these because these are alcohol markers, so it reacts differently. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So you'll want sand, or not sand, <laughs> we're making sand. Sicilian yellow and tan. I'm gonna do it is kind of this one will be a little tricky because we have a ton of area to cover. Just try not to get it on these blades of grass or your stone. But I'm basically throwing the tan in where there would be shadows. And then occasionally, you know, just here, obviously, where these stones are, which I know seems so tedious. And then up here we have grass. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to worry about like these stones that are completely blacked out. I'll just cover those. This is kind of awkward. I love Teresa Goodrich's work, but sometimes it can be so busy that you're like, what is that? And then You'll think you know what it was, and then you finish the picture, and you finally realize what it really was. <laughs> I'm like, oh shoot, that was supposed to be something else. Oh well. But I love her artwork. It's very busy, but with an ink tense palette, it goes by a lot quicker. So you know, what? I'm just gonna make this sand. We're just gonna call it sand. We have sand that goes all the way up here, too, because that's the water. We'll even have sand in between here. Just lightly putting that down. Put some back here, but not covering my grass blades, of course. Might even just pull it around a little. This might be our entire half hour, guys. <laughs> we'll see how long this takes. Maybe what I'll do is, since we're already almost to 10 minutes, um, I'll get like this half going for us, show you the combo, and then get started on the stones. That way you have some coloring homework. And just when you thought you were an adult, So take your Sicilian yellow, which is a really pretty golden, sandy-ish color. We may come back with more yellows. We may even come back with some more browns. It's hard to say. I want to see how it looks when it's activated. Basically just adding this now. Just remember, don't get it on your grass or your stones. Whenever possible. I mean, the stones will be easy to cover up because we'll be doing those in gray, but the grass, a little more difficult. Okay. Get that in there. And what I'm purposely going to do is, like near this open space here, 
I will leave some white space and just kind of drag the color a little more there. In between these leaves is where it's a little tricky. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't even need a sharpened pencil. If you feel more comfortable sharpening it, like, please sharpen your pencil. <laughs> it's, it's not a big deal. It's just you don't have to with these. Like I know, it used to drive me crazy not sharpening them, so I get it. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that around. And I'm just gonna leave it very light in here. Because we got a lot of sunlight for this lovely beachy day. I'm kind of lightly putting it there, but not as heavy. All right, now let's get that started and then we'll start the stones. Okay, so up here, I'm just gonna kind of gently drag that through. Okay, in between the, the chairs. All right, so now, and I want to just gently drag around. Now this is one where you'd be like, oh, I really wish I had a water brush today, but it can be done with an alcohol marker. It's just you have a little more to maneuver in all these little tight spaces. And because the color doesn't drag as far as it would with a, a water brush, do a little more work, but it's okay. So anywhere I have the shadow, I don't want to pull that out too far. So I kind of just wet it where it is, but I don't drag it. It's so like how I have that shadow here, I wet it, but I'm not dragging it all over. And here's where it gets a little tricky on all this greenery. And down here, I'm just going to wet this and then kind of feather it up. Luckily this will dry quick, so if you ever want to add more layers, you'll already know, okay, I need more layers here, less here. So here I'm just kind of wiggling this around to saturate it and pull it around. Might need to add more in those areas, we'll see. It's hard to tell because your marker will give you the illusion that it's been wet and there's color. And then once it evaporates, you're like, oh, there's nothing there. But so far, um, part one came out today. These, obviously, I'm filming these ahead of time. So I give myself a buffer in case life happens. But, um, yeah, part one came out today. And I got some really good feedback from you guys. So that was good to know. I wanted to try doing shorter color alongs just to see if that was easier for you guys. Um, color alongs are just so hard to gauge because you never know if people actually watch them. Because <laughs> it's one of those things where most people are like, well, I, you know, they don't really watch it until they have the book or they want to color that page or whatever. So you're ne you never really know how many of your color alongs people actually watch or want to watch. Um, and then, like I said, I, I had kind of stopped doing color lungs for a long time because it just wasn't uh, doing much. Like, I, I didn't feel like that was what everyone wanted to see. But it seems like a lot of you are happy that I'm doing color lungs, so I'll keep doing them. 
when I'm already coloring these pages. I really don't mind coloring it on camera. But I may do a mixture of like these short ones where they're like quick color longs that are just in more parts, but still do some longer ones. It'll depend on the picture. I need to activate this over here. You can also tell where you didn't activate because you'll still see pencil lines. Um, I will say though, the, these little 30 minute ones are pretty fun because like I sit down for 30 minutes, just color a little bit, go back to the whatever I was working on. Okay, let's clean off my brush. And then it's a lot easier to edit, that is for sure. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you can see the white space there, but that's okay. It's okay to have white space and paint. It's all right. It's okay. Um, some people freak out if there's a little white space. I like white space because once the whole thing's colored in, that white space looks like it was meant to be. So I may leave that as your homework. Uh, so just remember tan and Sicilian yellow for coloring the rest around here because I want to get working on some of these rocks with you guys. Um, da, 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 da. This is where it's going to get tricky. These ones can look really different. And there's not a ton of good grays. All right, so let's see. Look at all these I've cleaned off. Okay, so this is natural or neutral gray. Let's get that right. Payne's gray. It's more bluish. Um, let's see how the charcoal gray. There's really not a light gray, is there? Hmm. Could always add white, but let's see. That one I can already tell isn't gonna work. All right. So the neutral gray. Oh, the cap on that artify is killing me. The neutral gray. Oh, that'll spread out nicely. Okay. Uh, this is Payne's gray. That one would actually look good for accent. This is charcoal gray. Okay. We can make this work. This was my only worry was the rocks, <laughs> but we can do this, guys. Um, so I'm gonna take my charcoal gray. Okay, I'm just put this down here because I think that's charcoal is pretty much my darkest. I mean, rocks are not a solid color. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to do a lot of dragging in this one. Almost have to. And then let's take some Payne's Gray. Maybe add a little smidgy here and there, because remember, this is bluish. Um, let's do some Payne's Gray on this one. Drag that one out. Let's add some Neutral Gray this one and I might just drag that one to the top and see how it looks now these stones just do a combo platter it's like did that one this one will be have some Payne's gray so will that one so will that one really not thinking about it guys <laughs> uh, let's grab our neutral gray Let's just put that there so you don't have to like copy my exact order here. This may be one we have to bring white into, but we'll see. Nice thing is the alcohol marker does, oh, my pencil's kind of bent. I just realized that Um, the alcohol marker does whitewash the color. So if we had to, you could just go back over it, kind of dull it out. All right, grabbing some Payne's Gray again. Just throwing that in wherever it looks good. Like, yeah, that looks good. Sure. Toss it in there. Just get some charcoal in there again. I'm going to put some charcoal here. And here. Get some of these stones. And let's grab our neutral gray for these other stones. It's like, did I get them all? Alright, let's test this out. So 
So we'll take our colorless blender and just drag it across. See, so it gets a natural highlight. Same thing here, I'm just gonna drag it up. And then here we have two colors, so I'm gonna drag that one up that way and drag the other one to meet it in the center. And I know this one's pretty dark, so I'm gonna drag that one this way first. And drag that to meet it in the center. I'm just trying to create like my own natural highlights using the, the color we have while moving it around. But because these are so dark, you wanna be a little cautious. All right, so with the rocks, basically, I'm going to drag the color across just in one stroke from where it started. And that is it. Any extra that's left on the tip you can use to get these smaller rocks that maybe you didn't get your pencil on. And that'll create a natural highlight, so I can use that to dab there. This one might be starting to fray on me. I know one of my Ohuhu blenders I actually used a lot when I first got them. So I was trying to figure out what the heck do I do with this colorless blender? <laughs> so that's one of those things. By the end of it though, I was just like, ugh, I'm done with this thing. All right. Yeah, I'm liking that. And then of course, clean off your brush. Or nib, I should say nib. Yeah, so see how as it's evaporating, you can naturally see those highlights? I think that actually looks pretty stellar. That's going to be a lot of fun. So I think that's what we'll do for our homework. So just remember, um, with all of your stones, it's going to be neutral gray, Payne's gray, and charcoal gray. Just put them down in whatever order makes you happy on these rocks. Like mix them, combine them. It's okay. They look fine. See? They look fine. And then, same thing with the sand. We'll just keep going through for our homework. Um, <laughs> with Sicilian yellow and tan. And then just going all the way around here because this is all sand and rocks. And then in part five, we will start tackling some of the greenery. But I think we have a couple minutes, so I would really love to color this moped. It's like just begging to be colored, and I really want it red. So, oh my gosh, by the end of this, I might end up using all my colors anyways. I've got my hot red, something just a little bit. orange. No, oh, that'll work, I think. All right, so you have your hot red and mid vermilion. So take the hot red. Just kind of put that down. I'm going to drag that to the, the center. So I'm putting it more heavy and then feathering it out. Heavy and feathering it out. Now that's a light right there, so you want to leave that be. And that's a tire down there, so we'll use our black on, we'll use a combo of black and gray, actually. I think that's a light in there, so we're going to leave that alone. Oops. And then take your mid vermilion, like one of my rarely sharpened pencils, or rare to find sharpened pencils. Now I'm adding this just to add... A little contrast. I'll add that to the handlebars. Okay. And then go ahead and grab um and I might use blues for the headlamp, so we'll wait on that. Just grab your um alcohol marker 
Now with the reds, you always want to drag the red out for here. And same thing here. Just circle it around. And up here, we've got a little bit. And then with this one, I'm just going to gently kind of wiggle it into that white space. Again, don't go over it too much because you don't want to wash out that color. Now, if you have a water-based um, colorless blender like a Tombow, you can go over it a lot more and you don't have to be as cautious. It's not going to wash it out. But an alcohol-based marker will. So just keep that in mind um, when we're doing this. And this moped, I might actually make this one blue. Like I said, I like balance. Like We have all this blue up here. We need the blue down here because what else down here is going to be blue? If you think about it, nothing. <laughs> so most likely this will be blue to bring that blue from here down here. And then the sign, I'm thinking we should do like reds and oranges. That would be a lot of fun. So yeah, let's, um, let's go ahead and tackle this sign while we're doing that. Um, okay, so... You want to grab your hot red. And I'm just going to make that part of the shadows. And the bar behind it, I might make a wood grain out of it. I'm not sure yet. I just realized we're not coloring that one. I've given you guys so many lessons on erasing these things. <laughs> it's because I get like carried up in myself and then I'm like, do do do, oh shoot. I think that happens to all of us though. We just kind of get absorbed by our coloring and then it's like oh I should be doing something else here okay then I'm going to take my tangerine kind of fan out into that so that it's not like all red it's more orangey red now you could leave some white space here if you wanted like at the end of this A, I could just leave that white right there and drag it out. All right, I think that'll be good. Okay, and then grab the uh, yellows we've already been using, golden yellow and cadmium yellow. This one makes me a little nervous. I may get a little red in that one because that one didn't erase very well. But we're basically using the um, golden yellow as our darkest. Okay. And then take your cadmium yellow lightly put that in there again you can leave some white space if you're not comfortable dragging it with your mo uh, marker marker <laughs> uh, then don't it's really up to you all right grab our marker just gently pull the red first here see I'm pulling the red out and then getting that yellow or orange would help if I could tell the color right, wouldn't it? And then I get that red in there. We're gonna do the reds first. That way we can clean off the brush nib. And then I'm just gonna pull this out. Okay. Let 
do that one here. All right, now clean it off. So you do not want to get that in your yellow. And same thing, activate your darker yellows and then just kind of pull the darker yellow into the lighter yellow. Try to not grab any of your red or orange in case you didn't activate it all. Oh good, I did erase that one. That one I was kind of worried about. There, clean that off. I always need to do that before I cap it. Okay, so I think this is coming along and looking super cute. Now, say you felt like these um, yellow ones didn't have enough color to them, you could totally take your tangerine, let's make sure that's dry, put some tangerine here in the shadows, like that, just a teensy bit. Pull it out. And then once that dries, you'll have a better contrast. Same thing, um, you could take your, over here if you feel the red isn't strong enough, just add another layer of hot red. So I'll put some here. Same thing. Activate it and just pull it out. There. So you can definitely do that, and I might even do that to mine. Just keep adding more and more layers. Like I said, just make sure it's dry. So like again here, just test it. The A is dry, so I'm taking my hot red, which was our darkest red. Adding it there. I'm adding it here. Emphasizing that one right there, just gently pulling it this way, and then pulling it very carefully that way. And there, see, it adds more depth. So totally do that. I'll probably still, I'll probably do that myself um, as these dry. Like I said, you always have to wait for your marker to dry and evaporate, but it dries so much faster than water, guys, that you can like totally dive in when you're ready. So. If you do want to do that, I would say just take your hot red and re-emphasize those areas um, and then use your tangerine uh, to kind of re-emphasize the depth here because see the difference between these two letters versus the ones over here. So it's definitely something to do. And then just to recap, um, while we're getting ready for part five, when you come back, you want to make sure this is done. So you'll keep doing the sand, just using tan as your shadow color, Sicilian yellow as your sand. I would even leave some white space around here if you want. And then go ahead and just color your rocks using neutral gray, Payne's gray, and charcoal gray. And that includes these big rocks up here, and then all these little pebble stones, and then there's one rock here. We want to make sure we get all those done, and then that way in part five, we can tackle the moped, um, all the greenery, the ocean, and you know what, part five might be a little longer, but I say we finish this up in part five. So you have to let me know in the comments below if you agree, um, and what you think, although I may have already recorded it before then, <laughs> but it, so maybe part five will be a little longer just so we can get it done and out of the way. We did not activate that willow right there. So just real fast, pretend that never happened and activate that real quick. Ta-da, okay, it's happened. <laughs> um, that's why I'm always weary about putting down too much. But yeah, I think we're pretty close. So hopefully we can finish this in part five. If not, whatever, I'll do a part six. Let's zoom out. So yeah, that is what we have going so far, guys. And as we keep adding, it just looks cuter and cuter. So I'm super excited. I hope you guys are enjoying this and having some fun, learning something new with your ink tents. Um, 
And as always, leave me questions, comments below. Definitely please hit that likes up or thumbs up if you um, enjoy this. That helps me know that you enjoy this type of content and to keep creating it. And then it also just helps my channel in general. Um, YouTube enjoys seeing thumbs up and all that great stuff. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for part four. And I will see you in the next one.